PBC Fight Channel. Well, with me, just to my day one, people. My coach, my dad, small, loyal circle. Now I'm training for the best Mike UFC possible. I really enjoy being up here. It allows me to concentrate on my fight, get enough rest so I can perform well and not have any distractions, including family, including the kids. This is how I provide for them. This is how I put food on the table for them. It's how I'm giving them the best. You know, it's definitely motivation to have them in the gym, having them surrounding around me, especially when I'm not wanting to train. My pride is this right here. This is the whole reason that I'm fighting, you know, March 16, the whole reason Mike Garcia moved up. It's a blessing, you know, that we used to have our dad to be part of the team, he loves his kids, and he wants to see Mikey do well. Yeah, I can't wait to just take off this suit and put on some boxing gloves and go to work. This is the fight that I wanted. This is the fight that I've been asking for to establish myself as one of the best of this generation and eventually one of the best of all time. On a rainy day in Arlington, Texas, at the Dallas Cowboys' massive home, AT&T Stadium. A media event is about to begin. And two of boxing's best pound-for-pound -pound fighters will come together for the last time until fight week. Mikey, can you picture 50,000 fans in here? I don't know how many people are going to be here, but it's, it's going to be a lot. <laughs> it's exciting. Guys, it's, it's pretty cool, man. I was here for the game back in November, and you know, I was here as a fan. But then it kind of you know, it hits you. It's gonna be filled with people watching you. Walking in right now, you know, and now seeing all the billboards. It's like, wow, this is, this is really happening. It's pretty damn cool. I never imagined I'd be in a place like this. I never imagined we'd be, you know, where we are. Dude, it's crazy. Good morning, sir. Good morning, good morning. How are doing, sir? Good seeing you, good seeing you. Okay. We're excited. I sure am excited about this. Good morning, good morning. No doubt. Get us, get this place. Screaming like it's filled full of cowboy fans out here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Just having Jerry here and, um, you know, him taking his time out to be here and, you know, promote the fight was great. Pleasure meeting you. Nice to meet you. Well, I can't imagine how proud you must be of that one. I am. I am. Yeah. yeah that should be. Well, thanks very much. Should be. He's just quality all the way over. Must have taken that after his mother. <laughs> it's amazing to have uh, the two of you where you are in your careers and the talent you've got uh, go against each other out here. It's absolutely amazing. championship of the world is on the line as the undefeated champion from the Dallas area Errol Spence Jr. puts his title on the line against fellow undefeated world champion Mikey Garcia. That's just really dope and just seeing you know the gentleman we're trying to see myself on there you know it's a real moment and um you know I'm sure I'm be seeing a lot of myself on the gentleman trying. <laughs> When we have a fight of this caliber, and we have it here at AT&T Stadium, we know we're doing something very special for sports, and we're doing something very special for boxing. Real champ. Get relinquished their title. What separates yourself from Mikey Garcia? Um, I think, you know, I'm just, I'm just a better fighter. You know? I mean, he's a great fighter. He had great skills. He's very technical and everything like that. But I think, you know, I'm just a better fighter overall. You know, I'm trying to do things that will add to my legacy. And, you know, this is the type of fight that I need. An undefeated world champion like Errol Spence is, is a huge, huge step up. And, and that's a challenge, you know. But that's what I'm prepared to do. That's what I want. Because, like I said, that's what's going to add to my name, to my legacy. I never imagined I'd be in a place like this, but, you know, I take it all in, soak it in, because this is this is honestly going to be a, a very memorable night in my career and a memorable night for boxing. You know, this is a great moment. It's going to be one for the books, and um, I can't really just, you know, uh, save it right now, but after, you know, I'm going to reflect back on it. I need a picture, man. Hey, Joy, can you take a picture of me? I'm too fly not to take a picture of myself. Hold on. My sleeve, uh... Hold on. <laughs> Let me see that. Let me see. 
So I like that one. Yeah, send out to him. Hold on, let me do it one more. <sighs> you know, I'm winding down to that moment where, you know, I'm in my locker room and getting ready to walk out to this big arena, focus on um, the last preparations for camp. It's time to go to the gym and do a little training there. Dallas, Texas, Maurice James undergoes his daily routine of getting the world-class boxing gym ready for the day. Same routine practically every day. Come in, do what needs to be done to the gym, and get ready for the fighters to come in. But here, the preparations required for Errol Spence Jr.'s arrival are different from most gyms. Lighting the candles is unique because a lot of fighters, when they come in, if they're visiting, they're used to boys' locker room smell. When they come in here and those candles are lit, that's the first thing they come in on. Oh, man, smell like birthday cake. Spence will be celebrating his own birthday next month. But for now, there's business to tend to. Just a few hours ago, he had his last face-to-face -face meeting with Mikey Garcia until fight week. He's back at the gym, preparing for the March 16th matchup. Seeing him face to face and just talking about the whole event overall, you know, I'm a little bit, you know, anxious for this. You know, I'm probably running off that. A little adrenaline too, you know. You ought to be tired. You tired? Man, you gonna crash, man. You been up all the 24, man, you been up for a whole day. Now, who does that? Man, that's crazy. Gonna work light today, we ain't gonna go all out. I'm work on some strategizing, blocking the jab, straight down the pipe. Stepping on the outside for the left hook he tried to throw. You might see that shot. You might not just come in like that. You gotta anticipate what he gonna do. Double up. Three. Rotate. Two of them. Three of them. Watch up. Don't stand up on me, though. Give it. Say low. Use that movement. Don't let him get set. Okay. Hold him. Good shot. Uh, yeah, pretty long day, man. I didn't even go to sleep last night, so... I mean, it's really like a 24 hours. No, I'm not out anyways. I usually only really get like four or five hours of sleep every day. Three of them. Still got to work. Still more time to improve and get better and uh, work at different things. So, you know, no slowing down till fight week. Spence has kept a strict six days a week training schedule for the Garcia fight. But the advantage of training at home means he's able to make time for the people who mean the most to him. Chris, I'm being greedy. You about to eat, bro. Drink some water. Okay, we're gonna eat in about 10 minutes. Every Sunday, man, this will go down every Sunday. Family time. <laughs> so on Sundays, it's, it's my off day. So usually we gather at my mom's house and eat dinner and talk, and it's basically family bonding time. Oh, that's a nice picture. I love that picture. We need to Spence, along with his sisters, Ebony and Kayla, was raised by his parents in the middle-class neighborhood of DeSoto, Texas. Among his tight-knit family, Spence is known as EJ. Mom, that was a for Halloween. I love this house. And every time I walk up to the front door, I just, you know, a lot of memories and different things, you know, run through my mind. Yeah, look at that structure right there, man. EJ was very, very active as a child. When he turned four, he was in soccer, football, whatever they had to offer, he was in it. I'm taking this home. I'm about to get on this the whole week. Why are you eating? When he started boxing, I just thought that he was just gonna do it just past time. And I guess maybe about two years into it, I saw that he was real serious. Spence took up boxing at the age of 15, and his rise up the ranks was quick. He was an Olympian in 2012 and turned pro that year. In 2017, he captured his first title, the IBF Welterweight Championship of the World like all his amateur fights. Like my mom and dad always just was supportive. Never just pushed me, but always was behind me and supported me and told me to 
You want to do it, you're going to do it. You do it to your fullest. Help me become the fighter that I am and the man I am today. To help me, Father, thank you for helping everyone preparing this food. We want to thank you for EJ. We ask that you continue to bless him with continued success. In the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you. Amen. Amen. Mike, can we eat? I'm just happy for him. Everything that he said has is coming true. He always said, I'm going to be at the Cowboys Stadium. I mean, he said that was his dream, and that's what he wanted. If you believe in it and you stay true to your dream, you can make anything happen. And, I, and that's what he did. He, he made it happen. Well, I don't have to make weight, so, hey, I'm going back for seconds, third, fourth, fifth. <laughs> Mikey Garcia's training camp home usually sees the fighter secluded away from his family. But today begins with a crowded bedroom for the 31-year-old father of three. Go, puppy. Hector's already gonna make you get some breakfast, okay? You ready? You hungry? You hungry? We gotta go, okay? We spent the night last night. Mom had to take off right now, so it was fun. You know, it's nice to spend some time with the kids, too. Something a little different than just the regular routine. We need stuff like this, you know? Delicho right, ketchup? What's your name? Ryu. How old are you? Seven. He'll be eight in uh, June. So my oldest, Angela, Allison. How old are you, mommy? Eleven. She's gonna be 12 in April. She's my firstborn. And the little one, what's your name? Django. His name's Alexandros Django, after the movie. How old are you? This. Uh, he just turned four last month in uh, January. That's a big bite, puppy. Are you gonna be a boxer? Uh, yes! You like boxing? Without his wife Fatima there to help corral the kids, the pound for pound boxer appears overmatched. Let's go, baby. Come on. Rough up. Hey. Let's go. Ray, wear your shoes. Come on. Hello, I'm not weird. Oh, you don't have weird. No, you don't. You don't put the other one? You don't put the black one? No. Put it on. Look along. With his children on their way back home, Garcia's concentration can once again focus entirely on training. But today, an impromptu challenge between Mikey's gardener and a boxing reporter grabs the spotlight. Come on, Pita, get ready! Get ready, before I start, go. Get it, but someone will have to record it. Yeah, we'll record, we'll record. Today, Blast, my gardener comes down. He sees the alien, right? He's challenging him. Hey, let's get in the ring. I want to spar you. Let's get the gloves on. Out of nowhere. They got the gloves on and they did a round or half a round. Que caliente, que caliente. Sí. Eso, Blas. Así. Eso. Ya se cansó. Blas, he starts swinging. Ali doesn't know what to do. Gets caught a couple shots. <laughs> Some good laughs. They're just fooling around. Vamos, Blas. Then they both get tired. Blas got really tired and said, that's it, no more. <laughs> they did less than a round when they were all gassed out. They realized it's not as easy as it looks. For fighters, the learning never stops. Garcia's training team of father, Eduardo, and brother, Robert, oversee today's heavy bag work, as does a special guest, former UFC bantamweight champ, Dominic Cruz. He's paying close attention to my footwork, my punching, my technique. 
He's disciplined, even-tempered, and it shows in his fight style, all those things. And that's what makes him different. Boxing training is so much different from mixed martial arts training because they're specialists. Were you throwing a certain number each time? No. Just whatever just you could whatever do. Whatever I could do and then time. First couple of sessions that we're doing, we're just doing speed. Just, know, just yeah. to keep the momentum going. Do the power oh. shots. I did like two of, of, of both sides, you know, left and right hand. But then I switched it to just my left hand because that's like my stronger hand for left hook to body. I feel like the third one is when I could really feel the power. So you get better before you throw because you feel it better in your feet. You, yeah, you get planted, you feel, you feel better. You feel the yeah. technique better. It's nice to hear like what his mindset is on power shots and where his balance needs to be, what his punch count needs to be. Things like that I noticed that I enjoy learning about. I can tell he's a student of the game because he's paying close attention to everything I was doing, paying close attention to little details that others don't. But he's a fighter. He's very smart. We were pushing the, the training, peaking right where we're supposed to be. We're right on schedule. I'm happy with everything. It's just falling in place just perfect. I feel really good. I'm excited, and it's just around the corner. is coming to an end for the night as the business of his life beckons. He's constantly finding balance between being a parent and being one of the best fighters in the world. Tonight, he heads to a familiar area in his never-ending quest for victory on March 16th. It's 9 p.m. We're at DeSoto West Middle School. I was running here as a kid. I was running here when I was an amateur. This is what I'm used to. My mom used to force me to go to sleep ever since I could remember, even elementary school. You know, I always been a night out. I always stayed up late and didn't want to wake up in the morning time. Since his career began at the age of 15, Spence has run countless miles under these lights. His dedication and commitment to his craft made him a world champion. His father has been there every step of the way for the journey they both started together. There's nothing that he's doing that we never talked about. I talked to him about the Olympics and traveling and seeing the world. We talked about that in the cars, on the ride from the gym to the house, back and forth. We talk about it. Very few people have an opportunity to see something grow from, from, from nothing to where he is. You know, I get emotional, so you know, I just stay in the background. California, Mikey Garcia's training session is held at a more conventional hour. But for the fighter, it's his work in and out of the gym that makes him anything but routine. I don't have the fastest hands or the quickest feet, but everything I do is done at the right time, at the right moment, and all that helps me be better than my opponent. I think what has helped me a lot and it, it separates me from others is the fact that I visualize the fight in many scenarios, many different ways, but same outcome, I'm always winning. Anything, everything I do is, is to win. If I already won the fight many, many times in my head, 
I go into the fight already as a winner. Whether it's me going down or me getting a cut or I hurt my hand, nothing's gonna surprise me because I already prepared for that and I already know how to react to that. You're afraid of the unknown. If you don't know what's around the corner, yeah, you're afraid to go look. Well, for me, I'm not afraid of the fight because I've already won the fight in my head. Your brain can't distinguish what you visualize versus what you're actually practicing physically. So I do everything physically, but then I also throw this mental preparation. And it's like getting double the workout. When I'm fighting, I'm reading my opponent. I look at their eyes. I look at facial expressions. I look at their body language, their posture, where they're holding their hands. With mental training and the way I read my opponent, it's just a big benefit that I can do all these things and become that champion that I want to show the world that I am. I envision a fight in my head probably a million times. I win, but it's just different scenarios how I win. I just prefer myself mentally for a 12 round group in the fight. I love it to be a first round knockout or a third round knockout, but mentally I'm always prepared for a 12 round war. In my head, I want a one sided beatdown, me just punishing Mikey Garcia.